Hi and welcome to 3D Print Tech Design. My name is Anton Monson and today we are doing an ANET A8 speed test. All right, so it's all pretty simple. I hope you can see me around here. Um, this is a completely stock ANET A8 except for one thing and that is the glass plate. Now, <laughs> I mean the stock plate is just terrible so I just put on a glass plate. Now, that might not affect the um, printing very much but it does add some weight to the, um, to the y-axis which means that we might get some different result if we were to run it without it. So, so with that said, I'm gonna print this model as you can see here. I just drew it up in Fusion 360 really quickly. The goal with this part is to be a little bit bigger and to be able to test it in both X and Y at the same time, but also in their individual axis as you can see here. So we have some angles here and we have some fast parts as well. I probably don't expect it to succeed at the fast part, but at least at the longer parts it should be quite fine. So we are going to start off with 70 millimeters per second, then 100, and then we'll just have to go from there and see what we can do. Uh, I want you to guess now which speed will be, I mean, successful before it oversteps. And I think that's really important as well. Since this is stock, uh, stock testing, everything is stock, except the glass plate, I won't be able to do any firmware upgrades when it, or updates or adjustments when it comes to like um, accelerations and stuff like that. So. Just discard everything like that and make your guesses down below how fast you think we can print with this today before it starts overstepping and not extruding it at all. And speaking of that, temperature is one of the issues here. Since this is stock and everything, we might not reach those temperatures that we really want, which means that one of the problems could just be extruding. Uh, I don't think it's going to be problems with like the, everything when it comes to uh, the machine, how it behaves and stuff like that. It's just going to be heating, I think. So we'll see how far we can push it and Make sure you guess down below what you think we can achieve and just let's go testing. Okay, so everything is preheated. I am now loading the SD card. There we go. And we'll go in, we'll print the file. We now have some tests. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the speed 70, so 70 millimeters per second. Let's see how that works. All right, so of course, first of all, it's gonna heat up a little bit. We are running this at 225 degrees, which I think this machine should be able to achieve. So let's just see. We are running the first layer at 30% speed, just to make sure that we can get it to stick to the plate. And I can see that the plate is just way too, too far up. That's not good. We'll just see if that's the first layer. That is not just the first layer. Ah, <sighs> okay, so uh, we're just gonna let it run the first layer, just to make sure that it, it is not an, uh, not an issue with the stepper motors running at 70 millimeters per second, which, I mean, it shouldn't be, but you never know. So let's just wait for it to start running, then we can start leveling. That's one of the issues with this machine, I, I find that as soon as I move it around, I have to level it again. That's a little bit boring. Okay, I'm actually just gonna level as we go. <laughs> so you just saw the live leveling and so the outlines are pretty bad, but that's just a prepar preparation phase as well. Now we're getting some speeds. Ooh, look at this. Okay, let's see. This is 70 millimeters per second. How are we doing? There's no overstepping. It seems to be able to extrude. Okay, but 70 millimeters probably go. I'll just leave this for a few minutes and I'll check. All right, so we are now almost at three millimeters. I think this is enough to be able to evaluate this. So I'm gonna stop the print, which is always a pain in the ass. Stop. And then of course, move it up again a little bit. All right, something like that. Let's go ahead and have a close up. All right, so let's just have a close up here. So we can see when both axes are running, there are some quite heavily vibrations here in the 45 degree that you can see over here. But otherwise, if we look at the um, x-axis, I think that it also has some pretty disturbing vibrations. But the uh, y-axis is... Uh, well, I'm not completely sure about that either, but it looks like a little bit better. But this is the quality at 70 millimeters, 225 degrees. I'm gonna bump it up a little bit and I'm probably gonna try to bump up the temperature just slightly as well. So let's go ahead with a 100 millimeter test. 
So again, at the 100 millimeter test, we were first running just some, some outlines uh, to put some pressure to stabilize the whole machine and the nozzle and everything. And now we're starting off with the first layer, which is again gonna be around 30% speed. So that would be 30 millimeters per second. And that seems to feel pretty fine. So soon it's gonna start running up and getting into 100 millimeters per second, which is pretty much to be this printer. So I'm really stoked to see what we can do. Okay, we are getting closer. The fan is going. That should mean that it's almost there. There we go, we are now running at 100 millimeters per second. I'm just gonna sit some, somewhere around here, hopefully you can still see. Oh, it's going quick now. You can actually see the temperature is dropping. Okay, so the 100 millimeter test is done. I'm gonna stop the camera. We are gonna stop the print as well. Oh, well, it's done and done. I think this is the height that we need. One of the benefits of running it faster is that it takes less time to get the same speed. <laughs> so that's nice. So let's just shut this down as well. Something like that would be fine. And we can now inspect the 100 millimeter results. It looks good. Well, <laughs> except for all the ringing, of course, but uh, it's still printing. You can see here all the axes. It's, uh, I would say, approved. I think pushing up the temperature actually helped a little bit. So we might do that for all the resuming tests as well, just to get some data. So now it's gonna cool off a little bit before I take it off, because last time I took it off, I kinda screwed everything up. It won't affect the result, but it's still gonna look a little bit weird. So I'm gonna try to be more careful this time. Okay, I'm actually gonna skip the 120 and just go directly to the 140, because I think we can do it. And we might actually need to uh, have something higher than 150. So let's go with this. There we go. Now we should see it start printing very soon. So there we are, you just notice that the temperature has changed again, so I can't do that before it actually starts printing. Again, it's running the same stuff as before, so we're not gonna well talk about more than that. So it's just running 140 again, uh, or not again, but running 140. And we'll see how it does when it starts speeding up. I find this pretty interesting, it's now running at the 140 millimeters per second test. Because we skipped 120, we just went directly from 100 to 140. I know it's crazy. Right now it's the first layer, so it's at 30% of the print speed, and it still feels pretty quick. We can see that the temperature is, is pendling between 230 and 233, because it's trying to heat up the uh, to 230, but it won't keep a stable temperature. So the fan is running, now we are at full speed, oh my god. It's actually... Okay, it's doing some accelerations now, I see. I think the firmware is kicking in and starting to work against us. So we're actually having some smart speed management, which, uh, well, maybe it's cheating, maybe it's not. Ooh, that's the treble. It's traveling at the same speed as we are running uh, the test. So let's get a closer look. Visually, uh, it's actually still pretty decent. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna leave it running for a little bit because, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe it's doing some coast and wipe and stuff like that. Let me just check the simplify settings. I'm gonna leave this, the printing here running a little bit. Nope, just check the software. There's nothing management going on, so it's probably in firmware. There's no settings in simplify that are doing anything intelligent at all. But it is going super fast. And the question is if we're actually getting up to speed. But it looks like we are. There are of course no under, uh, outline, underline speed and stuff like that. So it's running as maximum as possible. So I'm going to leave this for a little bit longer and see where we're at then. Okay, I think it's time we end this all with a bang. So we did 170. I'm going to skip 200 and we're just going to do 230 and see what's happening. Maybe this is when I recommend that you don't do this at home. If this works and we're not overstepping anything, I'm gonna even try 300 millimeters per second, but that's it then. Then we'll call it just successful and it's probably something else failing. So um, I'm just gonna wait for it to heat up. And there we are going. This is 30% of the print speed. We're right now running the first layer, which is set to 30% of print speed. And this still looks like it's a really fast print. 
Okay, so I think the fan is going to start. There we go. Okay, are you guys ready? Let's go. Okay, it wasn't that dramatic. Okay, that was a bit quicker. I think we are encountering some sort of acceleration issues within the firmware. Because I really thought it would be a little bit quicker. So we're actually handling 230 uh, millimeters per second. If it really is 230, I'll also have to do some post-editing checks to see if we can compare some of the speeds to actually see if they are uh, any different. It's thinking a little bit in that corner. Okay, cool. I'm gonna leave it running and we'll check in a few seconds. Okay, so I started becoming really skeptical here, so I actually sped it up to 299 millimeters per second. And as you can see in this comparison, I think we're hitting the acceleration limits in the firmware. So, uh, okay, I'm gonna try something different. Alright, yeah, it's a new day, I have a new shirt, but as you saw uh, in the comparison, and as some of you probably expected, the issue here is not with the actual print speed, it's actually with acceleration. So I'm, I'm not getting any higher speeds because the distance is too small. So again, I don't want to change anything in the firmware or adjust anything, it's going to be completely stuck just to see a little bit what's happening. So the next goal here is just to make a uh, base mode model because I believe that that might speed things up. So I'm gonna check that out if it's even possible to speed it up to like 250 or something crazy. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do. Otherwise I think we learned some about the safety of the printer. I mean it's pretty safe to run at stock speeds. I mean stock acceleration settings. You can get some pretty fast printing without having to break anything or mod anything. Again you should probably check out the power supply and the MOSFETs and stuff like that but I mean you don't have to change the stepper drivers or anything like that to just get some pretty fast printing. So let's check out a base mode model and let's go from there. Alright so we are starting off at a base mode at 150 millimeters per second instead of the 200. Just so we can get uh, a few examples and see if acceleration does any matter. So let's go ahead with the first one. The fan is going. Okay now we're talking. <laughs> check this out. Now we're talking. So this is 150. There's no acceleration in involved here. We are looking at some fairly good speeds. I'd say that this is similar to what we had before. Uh, but still not... I mean, it's not extremely high, but you can actually see the model growing up fairly quickly, which is pretty cool. So that's nice. Mmm, circles. Okay, I can start to see that we are at 150, we are getting some under extrusion in this corner. Now that could have been to do with, uh, you see the filament here? It's at its peak, what's it called, peak pressure over there. So if I'm helping, let's just see if I, if I help, does it become a little bit better? Uh, it looks a little bit better over there. I'm gonna give it a few layers while I keep the, the filament a little bit under, uh, with less tension. Okay, that's a few laps. Let's check it out. Yeah, it's actually better now. So it's something to do with how the filament is loaded, I suppose. But this is cool. We're actually extruding at two, uh, sorry, 150. And you can also see that the temperature is fairly okay. Let's see, can we actually get a temperature reading? <laughs> Maybe it's lagging too much for that. Uh, yeah, it seems to be <laughs> lagging too much to temperature and it's actually slowing down a little bit as well. Maybe that's with the buffering or something. Yeah, that, that, that has to be buffering. That's pretty cool. Okay, I'm gonna turn this off and we'll see if we can get it to print at even faster speeds. Spoiler alert, we did. So I printed it at 200 and 250 as well. So I don't want to show you that because we're going to have a look at it just very soon. But in this comparison, you can see how it moves around and it's actually a, not that much different. So it's probably acceleration here again. Okay, so maybe you're wondering, what did we learn today? Um, 
well. We learned that you can actually print fairly quick with the stock ANET A8. I would say around 100 to 140, maybe even 160 millimeters per second. But you should actually upgrade the power supply and maybe even use some MOSFETs. That's like the recommended upgrades. And before, yeah, just do that and, and you'll, you'll feel a little bit safer. And I'll feel a little bit safer recommending those speeds for you. Now, there is also the uh, cable for the heating cable for the uh, build plate that you should also upgrade because it's it's moving around a lot that's not really good but what's also interesting is that you see the importance of acceleration and when people are loading on different firmwares they are always changing the the accelerations a little bit and it's also one of the reasons why your printer might be miscalculating the printing times because in some parts uh, maybe the acceleration limitations in the firmware are stopping your g-code so your slicer are thinking that, well, I'm going to print with these speeds and these accelerations, and that's not true. It's going to print with what's on your machine. Well, of course, not, not the G-code, but the actual uh, um, uh, firmware limitation. So uh, sometimes you see that a print is supposed to take uh, 15 minutes if you're doing it super fast, but in reality, it might take 40 minutes because, well, it, it can't accelerate that quickly. So like mine was running before, it, it's fairly close to the limit, limitations. So that's one of the things that we can take with us from this movie. We can also say that with the stock one, you can push it fairly hard. I mean, these models are difficult to print at high speeds and the, and the machine is doing, doing it well. It, I mean, the lines aren't perfect, but again, if you uh, just in increase the temperature to maybe 235, it's gonna be a little bit better. And you wanna make sure you have a really, really tight and really good um, pressure on the filament extruder. Of course, there are limitations. Uh, you shouldn't always print faster. Sometimes just add a bigger nozzle and that's going to work fine as well. Because printing faster puts a lot of stress on the machine. I think I had a screw or two fall down. One of these for the build plate actually fall, fell off. So uh, that's something you should think about. Don't print too fast unless you really, really want to push it and you have a simple model like a vase. Because in normal models, it's not that good to print fast. And with that said, uh, since this is an Anet A video, I haven't done my review yet. Gerber sent this me uh, to me for free, so just to do a review, and I haven't done that yet. So uh, I don't recommend anyone to buy this yet because I haven't tested it fully. So it's up to you if you want to do it. But if you want to do it and support the channel, there are some coupons and stuff like that down below. You know, like everyone else does. Make sure to stay subscribed so you can check out my future reviews, my projects, my experiments, my videos, my scanning, and my 3D in general. Please like this video, so make sure you leave some comments as well, I really want to see what you have to have uh, to say. With that said, see you guys later, bye!